Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Thanksgiving episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. Thanksgiving will be coming in the next few weeks. And there will be a lot of events going on, both locally and nationally. It's a great time to be with family, especially after the pay crazy past two years. On this week's episode, I'll be talking about some of the events, plus activities one can do at one of Berkshire County's most underrated gems for arts and entertainment, the Berkshire Anthenaeum. First, it's time for this week's trivia question, which has to do with an event that I did for last year's Thanksgiving episode. This week's question is, which football game may I have accidentally cursed last year? Now, for this week's local entertainment headlines. First, an update on mask regulations in the city of Pittsfield. In a November 3rd meeting, the Pittsfield Board of Health unanimously voted to intensify the city's masking policy. Now, a mask will be required for anyone in an indoor public space. Businesses that do not follow through would face fines. The directive comes as Pittsfield has lower COVID hospitalizations, but increased cases. Now for an update on vaccines for children ages five to 11. The CDC recently voted unanimously to approve a vaccine made by Pfizer for that age group. Berkshire County has quickly offered locations on where to get the vaccines. Vaccines are being distributed in pediatricians offices, elementary school clinics under the directory of the Berkshire County Board of Health Association and Partners, and pharmacies. If you have any questions, visit mass.gov backslash COVID-19-vaccine for more information. In other news, elections were recently held across the country. Locally, Pittsfield and North Adams had important races. For Pittsfield, winners for counselors at large were Pete White, Peter Marchetti, Earl Persip III, and Karen Kalinowski. Counselors by ward were Ken Warren Jr., Charles Kronick, Kevin Sherman, James Conant, Patrick Cavey, Dina Lampiazzi, and Anthony Mafuccio. Michelle Benjamin won the city clerk position, and William Cameron, Mark Brazio, Vicki Smith, Allison McGee, Sarah Hathaway, and Dan Elias were elected to the school committee. In North Adams, Jennifer Maxey will become the first female mayor in North Adams' history. City councilors will be Lisa Blackmer, Keith Bona, Pete Oleskowitz, Brian Sapienza, Wayne Wilkinson, Jennifer Barbeau, 
Marie Harpin, Michael Obaswan, and Ashley Shade. And the school committee winners were Joshua Paul Valieris, Richard Alcombright, Emily Duanis, and David Shuki. Now, on to our other entertainment stories. If you are interested in crafts, food, and music for the holidays, this next event is a perfect one for you. The popular Shindy Craft Fair in Pittsfield will be going on again after it was canceled last year because of the pandemic. This year's event will only be held one day as opposed to a usual two-day weekend event. This is to keep patrons low because of possible exposure to the pandemic. Also, the Holiday Shindy will not be accepting open applications for vendors. It is an invitation-based vendor event only. Again, this is to limit numbers. Still, there will be plenty of food, arts and crafts, music, and more. The event will be located at the Zion Church in Pittsfield. The Holiday Shindy Craft Fair will be taking place on Saturday, December 11th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. It will take place outside the Pittsfield Zion Church right near the Common Park area. Masks are required for everyone due to the new Pittsfield rules. Now for some new artwork in North Adams. Recently, the city unveiled two of its newest murals. They are called Emerging, which is shown here, which is on display at Holden Street, and Welcome to North Adams, which is on display on Center Street. These projects are intended to draw increased attention to the North Adams downtown area by adding to the city's mural collection. They're part of a marketing vision and designed to be interactive by creating express expressive backgrounds for people to take selfies and pictures to share. Both of these murals were sponsored by the Cultural Council of the Northern Berkshires. The Northern Berkshire Cultural Council is one of only two regional councils in the state. Our next story is of a concert happening at the Colonial Theater in Pittsfield. The popular band RevTor will be performing as part of their 25th anniversary. Since 1996, RevTor has been a powerful presence on the East Coast club circuit and festival circuit, performing everywhere from Maine to Key West, Florida. They have shared the stage with bands such as the Grateful Dead, Fish, and the Allman Brothers. Their latest album, Snake Gold on Smelly Dog Records, was released earlier this year. This marks their eighth studio album. Guest performers will include Max Mercer, Wanda Houston, Gina Coleman, and more surprises. Rev Tour will be performing at the Pittsfield Colonial Theater on Saturday, November 20th. The concert is scheduled to start at 8 p.m. To purchase tickets, Visit berkshiretheatergroup.org, 
click on events, then RevTour to purchase your tickets. The Colonial Theater is requiring guests to show proof of vaccination, either by bringing in a physical copy or showing it on your phone. Masks are also required per the new Pittsfield rules. One of the most popular holiday events are tree lighting events. These are generally a great sign that the holidays are arriving. One of the ones announced is the tree lighting in North Adams. On Wednesday, November 24th, Main Street will light up to celebrate the hot beginning of the holiday season. The Drury High School Band will lead the way with holiday music as the North Adams Fire Department's main engine makes its way through the downtown area. There will also be a visit from Santa Claus and his helpers, and they will bring gifts for the first 500 children who show up. Plus, there will be other surprises in store. The North Adams tree lighting will be taking place on Wednesday, November 24th on Main Street. The event will start at 6 p.m. Traffic will be routed away from the tree on Monument Square on Main Street. Residents will be asked to gather to count down the seconds at this place. So make sure to leave early. Masks are not required for this event, although they are recommended. Proof of vaccination is not required either. Other towns, such as Pittsfield, have not yet made a determination on whether or not they are going to be doing a tree lighting. Stay tuned to WWHEN for more updates. This week, we are going to be taking a trip to a place that you wouldn't think has a lot of cultural activities, but if you look hard, you can find some. The Pittsfield Anthenaeum. On a personal level, the Pittsfield Anthenaeum is one of my favorite places to visit. Its vast collection of books and extensive history archives are just some of the highlights of this place. However, there are many other interesting parts to the library if you look closely. In an email conversation I had with Alex Rakowski, the library director, he told me, quote, our new tagline is Wonder Inside. It's part of the branding that we unveiled a few years back, end quote. One of the library's biggest monthly events is their book club. Each week, members of the library pick one book. Each month, members of the library pick one book that they found interesting and encourage other members to read it. The November selection was The Travelers by Regina Porter. The Travelers tells the story of two interconnected families, one African-American, one Caucasian-American, that spans from the 1950s to modern day. Through Porter's writing, it shows the difficulties these families have over a nearly 70-year time span. The book has gotten positive reviews. As Booklist magazine states, quote, Porter's electric debut is a sprawling saga. Readers will certainly be drawn in by Porter's sharp writing, end quote. 
The book is highlighted on the Anthenaeum's website, as well as the main lobby of the Adult Circulation Department. The library is also handing out museum and activity passes to many different arts and entertainment locations throughout Berkshire County. Some of the places that have been mentioned here on WWHEN where these passes are being offered include Berkshire Botanical Gardens, Chester Wood, the Hancock Shaker Village, the Clark Art Museum, and Mass Mocha. However, the library passes also encourage Berkshire County residents to visit places outside the district. Passes outside of Berkshire County include trips to the zoo at Forest Park in Springfield, the USS Constitution Museum in Boston, and a trip to the docked USS Slater ship in Albany, New York. These are just a few of the places for the passes. The Anthenaeum is always adding new locations. One of the most popular events are the book sales that occur, sponsored by Friends of the Anthenaeum. As a person who goes to these book sales frequently, I recommend both visiting the sales and donating your own books as well. Recently, the library changed some rules on what it no longer needs to be donated. These include VHS tapes, cassettes, magazines of any type, academic journals, both past and present, and anything that is scribbled, underlined, water stained, or in poor condition. Donations of all other books, however, are encouraged. Hours of donation are from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Make sure to call the Friends of the Anthenaeum at 413-499-9480 prior to donation. They should be boxed and brought into the library garage in the Bartlett Avenue parking entrance. At the beginning of each month, the library usually has some type of interesting art or entertainment event. In December, artist Greg Mychak will be hosting a painting lesson entitled Juan Francois Millet's Dandelions, How to Pastel Paint. According to the Anthonyms website, quote, Participants will have fun producing their own original pastel painting of Millet's elegant dandelions. This pastel painting workshop is designed for, memory, for everyone, from sheer beginners to experienced artists. This event will be going on December 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. Registration for this event is required. Please call 413-499-9480 and make sure to have your library card with you. Have you ever been looking in the Anthenaeum for a book and you find that it's not available there, but it's available at another one in the state? The Anthenaeum is part of a larger network called the Central Western Massachusetts Automated Resource Sharing, or CW Mars. If you can't find an item at the Pittsfield Anthenaeum, you can search the library's catalog to see if it is available there at another location via its interloan system. Once you find the item, you can make a request at the main desk for the book. You must have a library card in order to do so, and ordering a card is free. Shipping time should take a week. For any 
questions about any of the stories about the library I've mentioned and others, call the library at 413-499-9480. As stated earlier at the beginning of this episode, Thanksgiving is quickly approaching. This is a great time to spend with the ones you love, no matter how close or far away they are. One of the most popular events to watch each year is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. Every year, floats, marching bands, Broadway musical casts, and singers march down 59th Street, then head east to 6th Avenue, all the way to 34th Street and Herald Square, where the famed Macy's store is located. Last year, audience members were not allowed due to the pandemic, and acts were limited. Some even performed virtually as well. This year will be different too. Because of New York City's strict laws, all audience members and performers will be required to get their vaccinations, as well as so proof. However, that doesn't affect watching the parade from the safety of your home. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will be held on November 25th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. You can watch the show live on NBC or stream it on Peacock, NBC's sister streaming service. Additionally, NBC will be showing highlights of the parade in case you missed it starting at 2 p.m. Visit Macy's.com backslash parade for more information about all the performers, floats, and other parade participants. Another popular Thanksgiving Day event is watching football. Each year, three NFL games are usually held. This is a great chance for casual and diehard fans to watch their teams play. Thanksgiving and football go hand in hand. This year's schedule will be at 12.30 p.m. The Chicago Bears will be playing the Detroit Lions. The Lions have played in a Thanksgiving game every year since 1934, with the exception of World War II years. This game will be played on 12.30 on Fox. The second game will be the Las Vegas Raiders versus the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have also been a Thanksgiving mainstay, appearing in every game since 1965. The game will be shown at 4.30 p.m. on CBS, or you can stream it on Paramount+. Plus. The last game will pit the Buffalo Bills versus the New Orleans Saints. This game will be the nightcap at 8.20 on NBC, or you can watch it streaming on Peacock. All games are scheduled to change, with COVID rules and restrictions in place. Speaking of football games changing, it's now time for this week's trivia question. As a reminder, this week's question was, which football game may I have accidentally cursed last year? The answer is the Baltimore Ravens versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. According to my script, I referred to the Steelers as the Pittsburgh Penguins, which is a hockey team. The game which was supposed to be played on Thanksgiving, was then delayed three times because of a severe COVID outbreak for the Baltimore Ravens. 
It would not be played until December 2nd, a Wednesday of all days. To make matters worse, the Baltimore Ravens had 18 players miss the game because of COVID, including their star quarterback, Lamar Jackson, both of their running backs, and several key defensive players. Little wonder they lost. WWATN apologizes to players and fans of both the Steelers and the Ravens for whatever curse I might have brought upon them. That ends this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. If you would like to watch this or any other WWATN episode again, you can visit Pittsfield TV's and CTSB TV's websites shown here, or visit NBCTC's Facebook page by typing in Northern Berkshire Community Television on your Facebook feed, as NBCTC is currently working on their website. Also, if you would like to see the episodes in HD quality, make sure to check out my YouTube page at RT Weary. Thank you and have a happy and safe Thanksgiving.